Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's time to cover another first on this channel, because today I'm going to be talking about the complicated assisted crash of a satellite back to Earth. And what's interesting about this crash is that this satellite was never intended to return to Earth this way. Its mission now completed, the European Space Agency decided to use what little fuel was left in the satellite to attempt a first-of-its-kind, guided, safe re-entry operation. Again, something the satellite was never built to do. They were just kind of winging it, so to speak. So it was interesting to watch this whole thing unfold from the time they announced that they were going to try this a couple of weeks ago to when the satellite eventually came back to Earth on July 28th, 2023. But let's start back at the beginning. What is the satellite? What are you talking about, Marion? <laughs> well, the satellite was called Aeolus, named after the keeper of the winds in Greek mythology. The program was designed in 1999, but didn't launch until August 22nd, 2018, on a Vega rocket from our favorite spaceport in French Guiana. And as the name implies, Aeolus's primary mission was to become the first instrument to measure Earth's winds from space. Now the ESA has a video explaining what Aeolus did and how it worked, so I'll show you guys a bit of that now. Named after Aeolus, the keeper of the winds in Greek mythology, the satellite carries one of the most sophisticated instruments ever to be put into orbit. The Aladdin instrument beamed down 7 billion pulses of UV light to profile Earth's wind. Although designed as a three-year mission, Aeolus has exceeded not only its predicted lifetime, but also all expectations. Over the past five years, its data has been used in major weather forecasting services worldwide. It has tracked the Honga Tonga volcanic plume, improved the forecasting of hurricanes, followed the huge Saharan dust plume, shed a light on Earth's polar vortex, and filled the gap in weather forecasts when airplanes were grounded during COVID lockdowns. Altogether, it has brought 3.5 billion euros worth of economic benefits over its lifetime and is hailed as one of the most successful missions ever built and flown by ESA. So as you can see, Aeolus was a pretty successful and trailblazing satellite. But as they say, all good things. So it orbited the planet for five years, and after those five years, the 3,000-pound spacecraft had outlived its originally planned mission lifetime of just three years. It had nearly exhausted all of its fuel supply, so the plan was to let it simply just fall to Earth and burn up in the atmosphere, a fate that befalls a lot of satellites. However, ESA had a different idea. ESA scientists decided that what little remained of Aeolus's fuel would be used to perform re-entry maneuvers that would bring the satellite safely back down to Earth. Now, modern satellites are built with these kind of operations in mind, but back in the late 90s, when Aeolus was being planned, there were no requirements to do these kinds of things. That meant that performing such an operation with a craft never designed with these maneuvers in mind was going to be a thing. In fact, Holger Craig of the ESA Space Debris Office said, this is quite unique, what we're doing. You don't really find examples of this in the history of spaceflight. This is the first time, to our knowledge, we have done an assisted re-entry like this. So why do it? Why not just let the spacecraft burn up as per usual? Well, simply put, to do things better. So even though there's a very remote chance that parts of a burnt up satellite could damage people or property here on Earth, the idea is that maybe we should be trying to control all of these re-entries as much as possible, even if the satellites weren't necessarily designed for that. And here the ESA describes what they are dealing with when it comes to re-entry. Most of the satellite will burn up when it reaches an altitude of around 80 kilometers. However, several pieces of debris may reach Earth's surface. Many months of expertise have gone into planning the optimal location for re-entry which minimizes the extremely remote possibility that falling debris poses a risk to life. Flight control team is aiming at a stretch of ocean beneath the satellite's track, a long stretch of open water as far away from land as possible. Once Aeolus reaches an altitude of 280 kilometers, an initial maneuver will begin to guide the spacecraft towards the optimal position for re-entry. 
four maneuvers will then usher it down further before hours of critical final checks. Then, a final maneuver will direct Aeolus' journey home. The satellite will return in a matter of hours, the vast majority of it burning up in Earth's atmosphere. So with a team of people watching and monitoring both at the ESA and U.S. Space Command, Aeolus re-entered the Earth's atmosphere on Friday, July 28th, just after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just above Antarctica. The maneuvers that ESA planned were successful and ensured that any pieces of Aeolus that didn't burn up in the atmosphere fell harmlessly into the ocean. These maneuvers began on July 24th, so it took four days of constant maneuvering and firing thrusters on and off to get Aeolus to that perfect position where it could accept its final ever command from ground control and then burn up in the atmosphere, both in the ideal position and location. Now, I wish I had video of this. Alas, I do not. I wish I did. There were some videos online that purported to be Aeolus burning up, but I was not comfortable with their authenticity. And all the videos I could find were just people looking at monitors. But I'll leave you with ESA's final takeaway on why the success of this assisted crash was so important. Today, satellite missions are designed according to regulations that require them to either burn up entirely or undergo a controlled re-entry at the end of their lives in orbit. This first attempt at an assisted re-entry sets a new precedent for re-entering active satellites that didn't fall under these regulations when designed. With Aeolus, ESA is paving the way for safe re-entries and responsible space. Given the rapidly increasing amount of space traffic, protecting our precious but ever-crowded orbits has never been more important. So I think this is just another good example of not only innovating on the fly, but also more fully applying things that we've learned. We've got a lot of stuff up there in space, and a lot of it is pretty old. So this idea of applying new ways of doing things to spacecraft, even if that spacecraft was never designed with that idea in mind, I think is actually pretty smart. I think I read somewhere that we have over 7,000 satellites orbiting Earth right now, and it's only gonna get more crazy crowded. So I think this is actually a very forward-thinking idea to start experimenting with, and I was very curious to see how it would all turn out. I was watching a lot of this go down on Twitter, and ESA had this hashtag, bye bye Aeolus, and I don't know, that just made me laugh. Along with this picture of ESA operations after Aeolus crashed. <laughs> I like my space team with a sense of humor. So let me know your thoughts on how they handled the re-entry of Aeolus in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.